Good afternoon, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Growing Zone 6B. If you've been following along on the channel, you know that we had tomato misery this year. Um, so what you're about to witness is what happened to the green tomatoes that came out of the tomato pulling Lollapalooza. So come on along, I'll show you what happened. Son of mine, Yes. I have a gift for you. Oh dear. Green tomatoes. Green tomatoes. Now I kind of, as a joke, saw this green tomato wine recipe in the back of a tiny little winemaker's pamphlet. I've got. What is this? This is. But it's uh, the winemaker's handbook. Yeah. Winemaker's handbook. And mm -hmm. where did you obtain this? Amazon. It was okay. recommended to me via the homebrewing subreddit. Cool. So. It's like the last recipe in the book is for green tomato wine, which includes ginger and cloves. So it's gonna somewhat be a sweet wine, but probably fairly acidic. We've never done this before. And we have a lot of green tomatoes this year. So we figured why not? It sounds mildly ridiculous, um, but not that out there. Is this gonna be like a cooking wine or a drinking wine? I have no idea. We're gonna find out. Right. I'm assuming drinking, probably with like a dinner wine. Good I'm time. assuming we're gonna get a white wine out of this. But what would help? Not positive. Oh, this one's blushing. I'm taking it back. Okay. Right. Wash tomatoes. Remove any bruised portions. Cut into pieces. And we need what? Three and a half pounds. Three and a half pounds. All right. Let's do this. What are you doing? I'm gonna bruise the ginger. How do we bruise a ginger? In theory, the same way as you would smash a garlic. It's pretty bruised to me. So how much, let me see. It's pretty soft. I'm gonna squish this too. So, how much ginger does this recipe call for? Half. Half what? God knows. Half. Half ginger. Hmm. Oves. So this all goes into the nylon bag? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, and you said you wanted the potato masher? This is a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, it is. I've also got this. This is actually perfect. Oh, okay. Mash and squeeze out juice into primary fermenter, keeping all pulp in straining bag. Put ginger root and clove in bag, tie top, and place in primary. Stir in all ingredients except yeast, cover primary. 
Sarah Daly. The other things are water, sugar, acid blend, tannin, nutrient, Campton Crush. I have all of it. Okay. Except acid blend, we're just going to be using citric acid. Okay, let me grab that, that and the sugar for you. Thanks, I'm going to be here a minute. Okay. It's starting to break down, but I'm also working on a sweat. This feels very primitive. I feel like this is in the same vein as stepping on the grapes to mash them. So the tannin doesn't stick to the mm. the, the walls, the which it will. Yeah, you were right. I don't think that's all gonna fit. Nope. And all the air is out of the tomatoes. Yeah. Nope. Bubbles are coming out. That looks so cool. So what's gonna happen now where you're adding less water? Adventure? Also, I think this bag is leaking because there's seeds floating around, but whatever. Yeah, we didn't get nearly all of the water in here. I can take the, the fruit out to get the liquid in, but all right, I, here's I what think you should. I'm going to do real quick because I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to take a hyper on this stuff. Okay. This is the yeast and it's proofing and we got it nice and foamy so it's just about ready. And the yeast. Don't mash around. And we're done. That's it? Nice little fine fermenter lock for that. So now this gets to go downstairs. And I have to forget about it for a few weeks. Okay, and it's got to stay dark. dark? Yeah, you could do this in a cabinet too, but we don't have enough cabinets that are tall enough. But it doesn't mind like the interruption when we turn a light on. Oh, there. no. I think it's UV okay. specifically. Right. So it oxidizes it too. And then it's got to sit, what, two to five days? And then... Yeah, according to the recipe, it sits two to five days. We take the bag out. We're going to lose so much liquid when we take the bag out. I don't understand how, what this specifically wanted us to do, but I keep running into that with these recipes. And it's just like, all right, well, we'll just do what we can. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of winging it on this one. Yeah, there's a lot of winging it. Luckily, brewing is forgiving enough that you can wing it without too many problems. That's super good to know, especially coming from a canning background. Where you I'm can't like, wing it. Why are you winging this? You know? But no, we're winging it. But, okay. All right. There's not much that can go wrong here. Let's find out. I yeah. mean, we're going to science it. Okay, so it's been two weeks since we pitched the yeast. It's been sitting in the basement with its tubes and stuff going and burbling away and being happy. And so today, Lib took the, the yeah. stuff out of it, the solids. Oh, 
yeah, they're not totally solid. And we don't know what to think. What do you think? They don't smell right. Something's off about this. I mean, it smells aggressively yeasty, but I don't know if that's enough of a red flag to dump it out or not. It's kind of funky. So I think for now, we're just gonna, I transferred it. Um, we'll let it sit for a week and see if anything changes. Let's get a look at the jar. So here are the two jars. This is the new one and this is the old one. And as you can see, there's some goo in here. The stuff on the bottom is normal. Um, that should just be yeast, which is a good sign. Dead yeast? Dead yeast. I mean, it smells, like I said, aggressively yeasty, which should be a good sign. It also just kind of smells sour, which well, when you first, is less of a good sign. Let me, let me, when you first opened that up, yeah. You said, oh, it smells like bread. Yeah, like aggressively yeasty, like yeah. wet, and then sad it, bread. <laughs> and then as you pulled it out, it became more of a... Like a sour funk. Mm. But I think it's fine, but we'll have to see. Right. Um, I don't have the heart to taste it right now. I don't think it would be a good idea. I don't, yeah, I don't think it would be a good idea either. Though that is one of the main ways to tell if something's gross or not. Mm. Alcohol is hard to mess up. <laughs> Okay. Um, a lot of times people on the internet go, you'll know if it's wrong, if something's gone wrong. And if you don't know if something's gone wrong, by the time you get a headache, you'll know something's gone wrong. Oh, I don't want the headache. Let me, let me just well, smell it. not smelling it. You'd have yeah. to drink a bunch of it to get sick. I don't like the way that smells. Really um, but we had problems with the recipe too. This, it smells like feet. It really smells like feet. It smells like feet. Like sour Like not feet. clean feet. Yeah, no, like sour feet. Mm. All right, so what happens to it now? I'm going to forget about it for a couple of weeks and try to think about what to do. <laughs> think about what you've done. Think about what I've done. <laughs> All right, well, fuss about, find out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm developing some feelings. All right. What, what happens to it next? It gets a fermentation lock, which is exactly the same thing as it had before. Okay. And that's in Sani. You're pulling it out of the Sani? Yes. Okay. And that just sits right in there? Yeah. Okay. Well, this oh, lock, is that the cork? This is too big of a cork for this. Okay, so this is the cork for a five gallon carboy. You can kind of see into it, it's hollow. I was using the corks that came with this one until I accidentally shoved one all the way through and it sat there for a month until we could get it out. Your dad got it out though. Yeah. Well, I mean, the cork is, is dead, um, but at least we didn't have to smash the carboy to get it out because the carboy is more expensive than the cork. Bonus. Yeah. So this is just going back downstairs as is. All right. So we'll check in with it in two weeks. Yep. All right. Ooh. And we're back. It's been about two weeks and what are we doing? All right, so. You have to. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. doing it very slowly. Okay. I'm trying not to disturb the layer of yeast at the bottom and you can kind of see it's already a little cloudy. Um. All right, so this has been in the works since September 11th. Yeah. Um, but the last time we touched it was the 22nd. Yeah. So it's, it's been almost two months. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to rack it, which means take it from one vessel off of the lees, which are the dead yeast at the bottom and put it into a new vessel. And at the same time, we're going to stabilize it. What does that mean? So what that'll do is it's going to precipitate out any of the last yeast still active. Okay. So there won't be yeast in it no okay well i mean any more than you usually get i, okay. I think you get some residual but it's not going to start out it's not going to keep going i did oh you have to yeah you can kind of see there's still bubbles it's still bubbling not very f quickly but we're still getting a slow bubble which means that the fermentation process is still going um these bubbles are huge because i have them in star sand or I have the, the lock filled with star sand so it doesn't oh. go funky. Okay. All right, let's do the thing. Because it's All one right. ounce to five gallons, so I need half an ounce of star sand for 10 liters of water. 10 liters or 10 quarts? 
Oh, um, ten cords. It's a no rinse, Sani. Um. Oh, are we gonna test test it first? Maybe. That does not smell offensive. It smells weird, but not offensive. It smells. It smells funky. It's. I can't tell if You're the liquid over tiny cup. smells like the gas that's laying on top smells feedy, but I can also smell the wine through it. I'm just sanitizing an eyedropper. Okay. I'm not going to be able to get this in. It's not, it's not going to make it. You have to tip it on its side. Uh, Stop resisting. Asps, very dangerous. You go first. Tastes like anything. It looks okay. It still doesn't taste like anything. There's like a sour note and a little funky scent. I don't love the way it smells, but it doesn't smell like sewage anymore. No. It's bitter, but it's also sour. Like, I mean, that, that sounds like bad press. I, it's got high notes and it's got a bitter edge. Tastes like wine, but Wine, but I don't know. Something's. It's weird. It's definitely weird. It's not so, off. All right, so <laughs> all right, so all right, so we're gonna add stuff. We're gonna move it from one cardboard we're to the other. We're gonna move it to one from one cardboard to the other. Then we're gonna add stuff. All right, cool. And let's get this closer so I can quick swap it when it's ready. All right, go for it. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, now I'm sucking up bits. There we go, I'm pulling her up. And now we stabilize now it. Now we stabilize it. How many dropper fulls? I don't know. A half teaspoon's worth? So two. Okay. So each dropper full is a quarter teaspoon. Seems like it. Okay. From the foam bath. The sani. Oh fuck. Oh oh oh! It's popping up. Let is it, it let it expand up. Yeah. Good. It is. Yeah. All right. So now I'm gonna take this and shake it. Nothing. 
And it doesn't matter that it's foamy from the sandy, right? No. Okay. And that's it. That's what we bottle it. All right, we'll see you back here soon when we're gonna bottle it. Hello again, it's Sunday morning. How long has this stuff been? Has it been like a week since? Uh, a little over. How long? I don't know. Over a week. Over a week? What's the date? Uh, the 15th, maybe? 16th? It's either the 15th or the... It's November 14th. It's only the 14th? Yes. Wow. Okay, it's November 14th, so it's been about a week and change since we last um, messed with it. <laughs> so we started this project when? October 11th? 9-11. Oh, September 11th. Yeah. Okay, so, it's been so two months. over two months. Over two months. And what are we doing today? Uh, bottling it. Look how clear this stuff has become. This is just, it's blowing my mind. Cause this was so murky for so long. Let me get a. Uh... Oh, do you see that. that yeast suspension on the bottom? I do. Is it supposed to be like that? Yeah. It's so clear. Yeah. Uh, something I noticed. So I got a new racking cane, which is also the auto siphon. I'm trying not to make a mess. This one has a little nub on the bottom that comes off. But what this does is this can set into the yeast and not suck it up. Oh, so it only, cool. it only pulls in through the side. So this can sit into the goo and it'll pull above it. As opposed to mine, which just has a hose on the bottom. But this one can't accept a hose on the bottom. So today we're, we're bottling it. It's gonna sit in that bottle for how long? God knows. However long we want. Um, whenever we're brave enough to open it. Several months at least. No less. I'm gonna have to switch in a second. Okay, and we're going to stop. We're going to that. Okay, here we go. I got it, I got it. <laughs> Long. Okay. Ah, uh, maybe we should have done the crawl. Oh, you're nearly there. Oh, no, we're not worth? getting we're not getting a girl shot of this. Okay, okay, so it's just, right to here. Just pull it up. No. So what's going to happen to the rest of this? What? We're just. Oh, I'm going to dump it. Okay, so that's not worth saving. God no. Okay. <laughs> it's really gross. I don't want to drink that. Uh, I'm sure there are things you could do with it, but I'm not that advanced yet. That's what I just don't care. <laughs> There are ways to just dump like more stuff onto a pile of yeast and have it go. But I mean, this is stabilized, so it really won't do much. And as is tradition, one went all the way in and one went almost all the way in. I don't think it matters though. These paper labels are way more useful than the sticker ones. Those ones just sucked. They were really hard to get off the bottle. They're too. harder to get off the bottle than the normal beer labels or yeah. wine labels. They were made to last. Yeah. The dandelion wine we have is the only thing downstairs that's still got those labels on them. Ooh, when are we going to open the dandelion one? Did you want to do that for Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? Yep. 
And I'll bring a couple bottles of my cider up too. Nice. Okay. So you did it. We did it. We did it. Two bottles of dandelion wine or oh. uh, <laughs> green tomato wine. Two bottles of green tomato wine. And the last time we tasted it, it wasn't awful and weird. So this one was first. It's a little less hazy than this one. But you can still, like, ha, ah, that's my reflection. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Um, all the wine bottles I have have the, the nublin in the bottom to capture the sediment, which will be there. Um, there's, like, no way to completely remove all the sediment. Okay. But um, I'm pretty happy with these. It's coming out well. I'm excited. I can't wait to find out. I'm glad it didn't go down the drain. What's interesting to me is how it changed over time like we put it together and we were suspicious and it smelled vegetal and whatever and then shortly thereafter it smelled like a bad sourdough starter and then it it morphed into like this sewagey feedy kind of it was suspect it wasn't good it smelled so bad it almost went down the drain then um but here we are but it, six, we're kicking the can down the road six months. If we open this up and it's awful in half a year, then it goes down the drain. Uh, definitely, for sure. But um, I'm optimistic. Yeah. I'm optimistic. When we tasted it, it was... It tasted like something that would be good to cook with. It didn't yeah. necessarily taste like a sipping wine, you yeah. know? <laughs> um, like, you'd want to use this if you were cooking, like, seafood. I think this would be fantastic with seafood. Yeah. Um... Oh, I can't wait to see what happens once it's matured. I was thinking seafood. I was thinking anything that's got like a lot of onions, it would be a nice addition to that. Yeah. I mean, okay. So if it's just terrible, we let it go to vinegar. Oh yeah. And then it gets another life. Yeah. But, um, hmm. <laughs> we, there it is. We done it. We done it. We grew it. We pitched it. Oh, we did grow this. Yeah. So this is like totally like yard to table. This is yard to this table. This is yard to table. Tomato wine. Green tomato wine. I get so excited about just that whole process of, gosh, it came from Dirt. a seed. It came from one tiny seed. And boom. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you for hanging out with us today. We've got a couple more things that we're going to take care of. What are we doing? We're stabilizing. We're stabilizing and racking my two other hooch projects. And they are? Complicated. <laughs> Accidental. Well, these are the two I messed up. So there's a ginger molasses hooch and an apple wine cider hooch. I don't know what any of these are anymore. I can't wait to find out. So thanks for hanging out with us today while we got our tomatoes in a row, mm -hmm. um, in a bottle or two. two. We will catch you up soon. Take Bye. care. I know. I, I can't get in there is what I'm saying. Fine. I'd have to climb over you. Do it. No. You won't. Come to the other side of the table. Do it. Come to the other side of the table. No.